In the first part of this video series, we created a wrapper container, and then we added a couple of additional items in there uh, just to see how we can start playing around with layout. We saw how we can use margins within this container to uh, modify the positioning of where everything is, and how we can change the classes over here to either assign new attributes or modify existing ones. Uh, for example, margin top, if we want to move this container a bit lower, we can change this to 150, and it creates this distance above it in the margin, and pushes down all the content that it affects. Uh, there's a bit of confusion regarding <coughs> the positioning of a box and most of it stems from relative and absolute positioning. Absolute positioning is always in, in relation to the top left corner of your browser. See where it says that zero, zero, that one little pixel there? That is absolute positioning. For example, if I change this, uh, if I had a property of position, and the type of position is absolute, then whatever margins are assigned to this particular box container are in relation to the browser window. For example, if I add um, property of left of 10 pixels, then it disregards the container that it's within and actually moves the container 10 pixels from the edge of your browser window in addition to the margin that already exists on it so that gets added as well same thing with top I can add a property of top to 22 pixels random number and oops, maybe we'll make it a bit larger exaggerate and it will add 100 pixels in addition to the margin that's been assigned to it, I can toggle these attributes on and off. So margin top, I can actually disable just to see what the effect will be by clicking there, that little stop uh, icon. And you see that now the top of 100 pixels affects where the positioning is, regardless of what container that it's in. So this is what's called absolute positioning. If I change this position attribute to relative, then the container that it's in defines where those, uh, where the location is, and it follows this container. So if I change this container uh, by selecting it, wrapper, here in the CSS list, and add a property of margin top of let's say 100 pixels, you'll see that the box follows it. If I go back here to box one and change the positioning to absolute, then it disregards the container that it's in and once again starts aligning itself to the actual browser page. This can cause a few problems because uh, it, it overrides the intent of what we want to do. This container is supposed to keep all our stuff together and it's supposed to keep things related to one another. The minute we switch to absolute positioning, it, it doesn't matter uh, what happens in this container, this box just does its own thing in relation to the browser window. Sometimes that's useful. In this case, it's actually counterproductive. What we want to do is make sure that our container, the red outline box, kind of defines the uh, site contents. So I'm going to change this back to relative. And by the way, by default, <clears throat> positioning of an element is relative. So you have to really go out of your way to make it absolute. 
you may notice that when you do slice documents in Photoshop and export them, that they will be assigned absolute values. That works great if you're not going to touch your page layout after it leaves Photoshop. But if we want to create more dynamic pages with content and swap out the graphics to insert different types of things in there, then we really have to start building our layout from scratch. Um, what I'm going to do next is disable the position relative feature. And at this point, these are unnecessary because they only work with the position tag. If those aren't there, they, they really don't uh, have much of an impact. So you can right click and delete. So top and left can be deleted and you see there's no impact there at all. Now another thing that uh, has been a little tricky for people is how to get boxes to line up with one another in a way that makes sense. And this is where the float attribute comes into the picture. Uh, by default um, elements tend to want to go towards the left side of the page. Now if I add new div tags, uh, it'll just keep stacking them and it'll, you know, kind of pushing them towards the left. But what if I want a row of boxes going all across the screen within my container? That's when the float element comes into play. Um, at that point, what we want to do is assign one of two attributes. There's either float left or float right, and there's one, if we try here, float, the options we have available are left, right, none, and inherit. So we're going to focus on left and right. Inherit would probably just take from the previous uh, attribute and just assign it regardless of what was there. Let's stick with left for this one and see what happens. Okay, now we saw us change over here. This green container box did something. Um, let's change the float attribute here. So you can select over here your box2 class. Uh, don't forget, you can click here to grab it right away. And we're going to add a new property on this one as well, and we're going to call it float just put the first letter and we're gonna assign an attribute of left on this one as well and let's see what happens Ooh. now it's not what we expected but let's look at what could be going wrong here we have this one floating left let's select box one again this one is floating left also but it's disabled so let's click that on or off rather so that it's disabled and there we go now we have the two boxes lining up next to each other uh, we can even add a third box and we're going to name this box three we're going to create a new CSS rule for box three we're going to make it 150 pixels wide. We're going to give it a 10 pixel margin. And we're going to assign a different color border. This one is going to be dotted as well. The width is going to be thin. And the color is going to be, let's choose that. So we click OK. OK. And there is our container. It's kind of weird looking because we haven't assigned much to it other than a width. So let's go ahead and make sure box 3 is selected here. We're going to add another property, float. And again, we're going to add this left, and it assigns it right next to this one. So just to summarize what's going on here is that by floating left, everything is being pushed that way towards the left, and it keeps stacking them. If I disable the float attribute on this one, it will basically 
override and do almost a carriage return and it, it, and it gets a little weird because the height adjusts the wrapper and, and all sorts of content. So long story short, make sure everything is floating left if you want your stuff stacking like this in one uh, row. We're not complete yet. We've noticed that this wrapper suddenly collapsed in on itself. And that's just one of the quirks of HTML and specifically Dreamweaver. It, it kind of looks weird when this happens. There is a way to fix it and it's by adding one more div and this particular CSS attribute works with the float tag uh, consistently. So we're going to add one more div and this one is going to be called the, we'll call it the clear float. And we're going to create a new class for this, and we're going to call it clear float. Okay. Now, in the box area, you don't have to do anything here other than just click clear both. You can just choose clear left because all our content so far, the divs are aligned left. But if you click both, you got all your bases covered and it should be okay in this particular case. Now if we click apply, we'll see that our container is back into doing what it's supposed to do. This one kind of pushes out a little bit, but uh, don't worry about that too much. Now, the purpose of the clear, if we look at the CSS of what's going on here, the clear float class assigned to this container has only one property. It clears both. And by clearing it, it, it clears the alignment of the boxes. And that kind of brings the wrapper container back into its regular uh, behavior, as you might want to call it, uh, and, and actually starts looking normal again. Uh, we're going to look at floating elements left and right in the next exercise, so uh, check back in if you want to learn more.